Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in crypto and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we're going to go over three reasons, potential reasons, why Bitcoin and the entire crypto market took a big dip. So we're going to take a look at uh, those three reasons in a bit. We're also going to get into a little bit of uh, good news because there's really nothing to panic about. So we'll take a look at all those things. But first, let's take a look at what is the market and what the heck is going on. So right now, we've got a market cap of just below 2.5 trillion. Yeah. A little ouchy because we hit 2.8 trillion like uh, yesterday. So it was going pretty good. Then I woke up and I was like, wow, that's a lot of red. But uh, here we are. What's interesting, though, is that the sentiment for today is still neutral. People are like, yeah, whatever. And uh, I think that's just a testament to what we're all getting used to, this volatility. And it's big volatility, but there's reasons behind that volatility itself. And then as far as like the price goes, I mean, look, Bitcoin's still holding around 54, almost 55. So, all right, great. Ethereum is above 4,000. And don't, I mean, if you remember not too long ago, we were talking about how great it was that Ethereum blasted over 3,000. We couldn't believe it. Now here we got, we were at 4,500. Now we took a little bit of a pullback and everybody's freaking out, but it is what it is. Binance coin, last 24 hours down 7%. Tether, nobody cares. Eh, kind of. <laughs> Solana, everything's down. Is anything up? That's the real question. Is anything up in the last 24 hours? No, nah, not really. Ooh, mana. Mana was up 20% in the last 24 or seven days. That's pretty good. So on and so forth. So that's what's going on. Uh, what I also want to do is I want to take a look at just by category. There's this there's this great uh, little little piece on CoinGecko. If you just click on categories, you can see just how things are doing over the last hour and 24 hours. If we take a look here, over the last one hour uh, piece, uh, smart contracts in general, Ethereum, Solanas, Cardanas, type of things, up 1.8%. 24 hours, yes, it's down, but uh, it is what it is. And stable coins, I highlighted this because as things start to take a dip down, you see people usually start to sell and panic, which is, which is fine if you, not panic, but if you're trying to take profits, it's not the best time when everything is, you know, crashing. But if you do it at the very beginning, I mean, hey, it is what it is. Uh, and I like to highlight this just to show people that, hey, uh, once the stable coins start to actually increase a little bit, you're going to see why, uh, because people start to get into stable coins. And it leads me to another point, which is, you know, I talk about, you know, dollar cost averaging in and dollar cost averaging out and taking profits for days like today. So I know people don't like to take profits or even talk about profits on YouTube for some reason, but uh, it is a necessary evil uh, for these days. So just uh, remember that. And then uh, as we move down, there's two pieces I want to make mention of is uh, gaming and metaverse. And over the last hour, everything's up, you know, doing pretty well. Uh, but metaverse and gaming in seven days is up 30% for metaverse and 45% for gaming. Uh, the engine, the uh, sandboxes, the, the, the unities. So don't discount those because I think they're going to be a very, a very big play. And it's looking uh, pretty positive. Uh, so far in those realms. And there was um, also one for, I think it was uh, Polygon up 1.4%, Solana, Cardano, yeah, so enough. And then uh, that's about it. I thought there was one for Avalanche. The Avalanche ecosystem was looking pretty strong, but that's not what it is. So that's what we have there. Then also, let's just take a look at some on-chain analysis uh, because that's the most important. So one of the most important things to take a look at. And just so we know, uh, as far as like our miners selling, no. And in purple right here, you can see like before they used to sell a lot and now they're still holding strong. So that's a positive sign, even though as the as the price starts to dip. OK, the exchange reserves. Well, are, are people, you know, clamoring to put Bitcoin back on the uh, reserve to sell off? Not really. I mean, a little bit here and there. Uh, as far as Ethereum, how's that going? Well, they did. There's a little bit of an uptick right here as people started to put it back on the exchange and sell. But it's they've been taking it off again. And this one I think is is a most one of the most important for today. It's called the Bitcoin All Exchange Taker by Volume. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on to the hour and I'm going to blow this up so you can see it. And what we're looking at here is let me move this. What we're looking at here is seeing this purple right here. These are all the the prices as whales or retail or just a group are actually putting things in to push or prop the price up. And you see right here where it it's, uh, it takes a, a pretty nice turn, almost at 60,000. And then the, uh, uh, as far as a, a taker by volume, it just kind of drops off as the price drops off. But as soon as it drops off to a certain point, around 54, 55,000, look at this spike right here on the very right-hand side. 
people, whales, institutions are like, this is where we want it to go. We don't want it to go too far below this because we want to freak everybody out. And it's like they just propped it up at around 54, 55,000. And that's going to play an important part in our next piece. So that's what we have there. And then to uh, round it all out, just so you know, liquidations, of course, when you get greedy and, and, and you go too long or too short, you get wrecked. And uh, this is almost, this is a three quarters of a billion got got uh, liquidated or wrecked in the last uh, 24 hours. So just be aware of that. If you see too many shorts, might be a good idea to do a long. See too many longs, might be a good idea to do shorts. But uh, I don't play that game. But just be aware that is what is going on. So that's it for you know looking at the at the market in general. Let's just break into the reason number one as far as why there was a big dip and what the heck's going on. So first, if you're living under a rock, there's this thing called COVID, and uh, people freak out when there's a new variation uh, discovered, even though they don't really know like. Well, is this going to be super contagious? Uh, what is the uh, uh, mortality rate and so on and so forth? I'm not here to get into that. That is not, this channel is not science channel. This channel is all crypto digital assets. But this was a problem because European officials voiced concern over alarming new COVID variant. I know we're sick of hearing about it. Well, whether you believe in it or don't believe in it, the reality is, is that the effects on the market are real. And that's, that's the fact, Jack. And we have this on the crypto markets and also in uh, in um, um, stocks and traditional equities. So what do we have? This, uh, this new variant uh, comes at a time when different European nations are grappling with surging cases of Delta variant and have therefore announced social restrictions to contain the spread. And um, I didn't really go into the, the, the big details because you're going to hear about this all day long. But uh, a handful of nations notably South Africa and Botswana, have identified cases of a new variant known as B11529. So you're going to hear a ton about this. And this spooks the market because they kind of see this as like another, you don't have to call it a black swan, you call it a gray swan if you want to. But what happened uh, last year in 2020, they're like, oh no, it's a new variant. And uh, people get a little skittish over these things. And they start to, uh, you know, just a, a flight to safety so that is the first thing but i will remind everybody about this is i remember that the delta variant that was coming out was supposed to wipe us all out we're still here so see how this all plays out and i don't that's just the the first reason so a new variation was found just so everybody knows and what do you want to take from that it is what it is and also here's the second reason the second reason is what happened here three billion bitcoin options expire on black friday which is today Congratulations, we made it. So um, just so you know, these holding put options were expected to sell in order to get the profits from their options before the 73,702 contracts expired, which puts more selling pressure on the Bitcoin price. And this was the number I want everybody to, to remember, that uh, around 54, 55,000. The bears needed to lower the price below 57,000 this dump, or they would have lost a huge amount of money, which they did. Now do they not lose a lot of money uh they push it down to around 54.9 and then of course everybody's like whoa it's, it's way too much it's let's let's not go that far and they started to buy things up and then here we are uh with this with this price of around 55 55 to uh bitcoin so again you've got the first part the variation found second part bitcoin options expire on friday a lot of whales are doing their thing trying to uh you know make them as much money as they possibly can and then Unfortunately, there's a third reason. And the third reason uh, just basically goes like this. The first two we talked about were pretty short term. I'm really not concerned too much about those. We'll see how they all play out. But right now, options and variations, sure. I, but this one right here is a long term thing. And um, I, can, I can understand where this is all coming from. So Goldman Sachs uh, says Fed may accelerate taping from January. And this is going to play into another uh, article in just a second. So what do we have here? Federal Reserve doing their thing, which is the central bank, <laughs> everybody's favorite, will double the pace of scaling back its liquidity boosting asset purchases to 30 billion from the current 15. So that's uh, they're going to scale back, which is what they're trying to do, which is prop up the market. And um, now they're going to say, look, it's not a free, it's not a big free handout. And we can't just keep printing money. Uh, even though they like to do that so much, they're like, we're going to scale things back. And then also, the economists, the 
geniuses in the room, uh, predict three rate hikes in 2022 and two in 2023. So just be expecting that when the rate, the uh, interest rate hikes go up, then of course things will just be like, what the heck is going on? We can't afford this because we just like to print money. But that's the reality. And they knew they were going to have to do it at some point, uh, better sooner than later. But this is interesting. The new, pro the new projections means the asset purchase program would end in March. Ex experts expect the first rate hike from near zero uh, in June of next year. So around between March and June, right now, these uh, little tapering, people know about it, but they're not really under understanding exactly what's going to happen over the next months and quarters. So it's not a big, big deal. But when we start to see rate hikes, and we start to see uh, asset purchase programs uh, ending totally. Look at the timeline around March. If you've been listening to a lot of people out there, a lot of smart people, and some not so smart, <laughs> just kidding, uh, they will talk about how uh, the extension of uh, the crypto bull run that's going on, going past Q4 2021, which we're in right now, and going into Q1, possibly Q2 of 2022. When is that? Well, end of Q1 would be March, and then uh, end of Q2 be June. So it's amazing how those coincide with what the Federal Reserve is talking about as far as like tapering and doing these programs because they can't print money forever. So those, my friends, are essentially the three reasons. Now, here's the good news. And it's not all bad. I mean, look, it is what it is. And uh, I think if you've been with me for quite some time, you know I don't really get too concerned about these dips. And now, in all honesty, it's a great time to buy because, you know, Black Friday sales and all those things. But when we take a look at this, as far as like the good news, and that is, if you look back at the different price ranges for Bitcoin, and I had, po I had tweeted this out, and that is that in 2012, uh, Bitcoin price on Thanksgiving was 12 bucks, $12, 2013, 829, 2014, 376. Why did it, why did it go down? Four year cycles, right? 2014, 15, 16, 17, 376, 327, 740, and 2017, 8,754. That's pretty good, but not as good as the, th these ones right here. 2018, 19, 20, 21. 4,000, 7138, 16, and 58,000. So do I believe that in uh, you know January 1st, 2022, it's going to go all the way down? No, just like it didn't go down from uh, 2013 to 2014 initially, it had to go through the whole year. I think the extension is going to really pick up. Now we might see uh, January, February, March, maybe even April. Who knows? So that's the good news. We keep going up. And uh, if we play the long game, I think we're going to be okay. And lastly, just as you might know, um, if we take a look at dips, um, especially in November, this is in Q4 of 2017. See that timeline? November down here. Actually, let me put this up. Timeline November. Let's go all the way up. That was when we had the last 33, somewhere around, around there percent dip, which is which is pretty big uh, for, for a dip but it goes right in line with exactly what we're going through. And that, my friends, just means that the same thing happens over and over again. Now, variations and uh, uh, different things that are uh, you know, happening uh, with, with the pullbacks, as far as like what the Fed wants to do and, and all that stuff, uh, it's a little bit different, but it seems like it just kind of repeats. And it's the ones that kind of stick in there, that kind of take the time, make it, out okay not financial advice just financial opinion and that's it for today so look if you uh i know it's a little bit it's kind of short but there's really those are the big things that i feel are really going on and really contributing uh to these dips and these swings and that's really all we got today so look if you like today's video give it a thumbs up give it a like consider subscribing again these next few months are going to be pretty big i think still fireworks but that's it so thanks so much i appreciate you for your time and uh, i'll see you on the next one